Hi guys, this is Atulya and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video is pretty interesting and one of the highly requested videos on my channel that is pros and cons of living in Perth. Now before we start, let me just give you a little background about myself. It's been about six months now since we have moved in here. Being an expat comes with its own challenges and I hope that my experiences and my learnings might be of help to someone who is considering to move to Perth or Australia or any other developed nation. So before Perth, I have lived in major cities in India like Mumbai, Chennai, Pune and Kochi. So there might be a little bit of comparison with what I have seen for the past 26 years of my life. That is one. The second thing is pros and cons are pretty subjective. Something could be a pro to me, but a con for you or a con to me, but a pro for you. So take it all with a pinch of salt. So that's about it for the disclaimers. So now let's get started. Pro number one. So the moment you're going to enter into the city, the very first thing which you will feel is the city is extremely clean and very well maintained. The parks, the roads, gardens, suburbs, beaches, everything is very clean. You're not going to see litter anywhere and it definitely makes you feel extremely good. Con number one is Perth is one of the most isolated capital cities in the world. The nearest city within Australia to Perth is Adelaide, which is about 2,700 kilometers. So yeah, not very close. And this is a bad news for all the travel junkies out there who love to go on international vacations because ticket prices are going to be very expensive and you'll have to book way beforehand, plan everything and then go. Bali is one of the closest destinations for international travel if somebody wants to consider and it takes about four hours in flight. But the good part is you do have a lot of attractions within the state and I'll definitely make videos on my experiences on these in future. So stay tuned and subscribe to this channel to get to know more. Pro number two is people here are amazing. They are very warm and welcoming. So this is something that I have noticed everywhere, be it my office, shopping centers, gyms, everywhere. People greet you. They ask you, hey, how are you doing? And sometimes that just makes your day. And I believe that this is majorly because of the diversity that is there. So here you will find people from all across the world. So when you live in such sort of a diverse situation, you automatically become more open-minded and more accepting of other communities, other ideas, and overall you become very warm and welcoming. That's what I have concluded. And this is something which I have noticed back in India as well. So we believe in Atiti Devo Bhava and we do treat our guests amazingly. But so if I talk a little about my experience with Mumbai and Kuchi. So Mumbai is the place where I did my schooling. In Mumbai, we had in my school, we had people from all over India and there was never a South Indian group, North Indian group or anything of that sort. Whereas in Kochi, we had a lot of Keralites and few North Indians. And of course, because of the language barrier, we did have that sort of a groupism, which is not great. But of course, we did help each other. But at the end of the day, we used to find our comfort zone in our own communities. And that was pretty common. So here, since the crowd is already so diverse, I think that part is completely ruled out, which is great. Second con is loneliness. Even though people are amazing, sometimes it takes time for you to connect with them, to have those common interests and common topics to talk about. This is majorly because the situation where you were brought in or brought up or the situation where they were brought up is very different. And sometimes it takes time to get those common grounds. And as an adult, it gets even more difficult to make friends. So there is always a tendency to incline a little towards your own people or your own community. And even after all of that, you do feel lonely sometimes and you feel like going home, meeting your parents, meeting your relatives and all of that. And thinking about going back to India to meet all of them, you cannot 
take an overnight decision and just go because like i said tickets are extremely expensive you have to plan beforehand so that is one of the biggest cons that i have that being said you do have an amazing indian community here we do celebrate all the major festivals and there are suburbs dominated by indians so if you any time plan to come to perth it's not going to be very difficult for you because you do have a lot of people from your own community pro number 3 and i think this is one of my favorites work culture here is great so i landed here on a friday and next monday was my very first day at work and i kid you not people were extremely warm welcoming they showed me around the office they introduced me to different people it was great and now it's been about 6 months uh, of me working in the company and i have noticed that my manager my coach all of them are they show that concern they listen to you they try and understand what kind of work would you like to do and they make sure that you're not overburdened uh, sometimes my manager asks me whether i feel overburdened do i have a lot of work to do do i need some time to chill so they value work life balance a lot which is great and they make sure that you are having good time to spend with your family as well and that is something that i really really love about this place con number 3 is life gets really really busy here and within few days you'll realize that you don't have time for anything and this is majorly because you have to manage the entire home by yourselves of course your partner will help but what i'm trying to say is you'll not have any additional help like a maid a cook a laundry man or anything of that sort you need to do everything on your own secondly people here are early risers so when you go to office even if you're reaching at 7 am you will see that the office building is full and this is majorly because they like to go to office early so that they can leave early by 3 or 4 pm and then go back home and spend time with the family that's the overall concept so what essentially happens is uh you need to get ready quickly in the morning and go to the office after you come back you you will have to do the dishes you might have to do the laundry you might have to clean up the home so overall it gets really really busy now if you're working plus you have kids it gets even more busier because here i haven't seen the concept of school buses or school vans mostly parents themselves pick up and drop their kids be it daycare or school or any other extracurricular activity coaching or classes that they are involved in so you will have to take time for all of that as well so life gets really busy another thing is since you are time wise ahead of india and like i said people here wake up early so you tend to sleep early as well so you will be sleeping by 9 9:30 ish and that's just 6:30 7 in india so sometimes it gets difficult to talk to your friends and maintain that contact this is something that i am facing because most of my friends back in india are working and they get free after 7 pm or 8 pm and by then i am already asleep pro number 4 So Australia is number 6 in the world in the list of highest salary of workers. Now, this is a fact which I picked up from the internet and this is very subjective to what kind of role you are in, what kind of work you are doing, but in general Australia pays well. The hourly rates is comparatively high for people here than a lot of other countries. This is a good thing because even as a student if you have a few part-time jobs, you'll be able to make good money, live a comfortable life. and if you're very lucky you might even be able to save a little that being said this also leads to the next con that i have on my list which is cost of living is very high so now you get a high salary but your cost of living is also high so your high salary majorly goes into affording this high standard of living which is not that great <laughs> so housing is extremely expensive and a major chunk of your salary goes directly into rent or mortgage so that is there now if you are thinking of dining at a decent place then for two people it will easily cost you about 70 to 100 dollars but again if you are comparing this with melbourne or sydney perth is comparatively less expensive but if you are comparing with india of course this is way more expensive another thing is so when you buy your grocery items if you start 
converting that into INR, you're gonna have a very tough time, my friend, because you'll see that every small item, be it cabbage, cauliflower, whatever, it's gonna cost you at least 10 to 15 times more than your, uh, more than what it used to be in India. But your salary is definitely not 10, 15 times more than what it is, it was in India. So you can do the math and you can understand this better. You can check out this video where I have spoken about cost of living in Perth in detail. I'll also link it down in the description. Pro number five is this is a great place to raise a family. It offers good amount of safety. It's very diverse. Plus the education system is great. The healthcare is great. So this is a great place to raise a family. Now, if you are an outdoorsy person, you will love it because here what I have seen is People do a lot of camping, boating, fishing, trekking, and all these activities. So I've seen people taking their kids and setting up their camps. And this is something which families quite often do. So I believe as a child, it's a great experience to have because in India, these things are not that common. At least I haven't seen a lot. I have been to camps, but that was all as part of scouts and guides and not with my family. So that is something which I believe is really great. The last con on my list is everything here requires an appointment. Whether you want to get your nails done, a haircut, a massage, or maybe even meeting a friend, everything requires you to tell in advance that you're going to come there, you're going to visit that person, check whether that person is available or not. That is something which is quite common here. You can't directly just walk into any of these things like not for services, not to your friend's home. Another thing is shopping centers here every day close by 5 p.m. So you cannot shop after that. Thursdays are the only exception when shopping centers are open till 9 p.m. But otherwise, everything closes by 5 p.m. So if you are somebody who loves shopping and if you are also working, you only have Thursday evenings, Saturday, Sunday mornings. So yeah. That's the con, my friend. What, according to you, is the biggest pro and the biggest con? Do let me know in the comments below. So in this video, I shared only five pros and cons. And if you would like to know more about the weather here, the visa, education, or getting jobs here, do let me know in the comments below. I'll definitely make a part two of it, covering more of that. Because of course, 10 minutes is not enough to cover everything. Don't forget to check out my other videos in this series. I'll link the playlist right here. Now, if you like this sort of content, do hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel for more. I also create videos relating to career growth and getting that desired package, LinkedIn optimization and things like that. Someday I'll also share how did I land up with the job here. So check out that playlist here. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. This is me, Atulia Nair, signing off. Ciao. So when you live in such, such, such...